Let's take one look at a common generic plant cell. It's distinctive because of the cell wall. Now, I brought in a plant cell because there is one another organelle with the same amazing history as the mitochondria, but this organelle is found only in plant cells. It is that major organelle where the super amazing food making process of photosynthesis actually goes ahead and happens. The plastid. The story is the same. The plastid existed as a type of bacteria long, long, really long time ago. One day a plant cell came along, absorbed one of these, realized that it would be an awesome bacteria to actually keep inside it. It converts light into glucose compounds. No one knows how this happened, but scientists know for sure that it happened because both mitochondria and plastids have double layered membranes, one from its own and one from the cell which actually went ahead and engulfed it. So plastids are of three types, leucoplasts, chromoplasts and chloroplasts and chloroplasts are the most important of them. And what they do is they convert light into sugar and oxygen. The plants don't need the oxygen, so they get rid of it and give it to us to actually go ahead and breathe it and then be alive. All the green parts of the plant that you see, the non-woody stem, the leaves, the unripened fruits, all of them contain chloroplasts. So we'll get into more detail about a chloroplast. It looks something like this. Two membranes contain, protect the inner parts of the chloroplast. They appropriately named the outer and the inner membranes. So the inner membrane surrounds the stroma and the grana. The grana is these stacks. Stroma is a kind of cytoplasm or matrix of the chloroplast. It contains enzymes required for the synthesis of carbohydrates and proteins. So one stack is called a granum, which contains many thylakoids. So chlorophyll molecules sit on the surface of each thylakoid, capture light energy from the sun, like sunbathing. As energy-rich molecules are created, they move to the stroma where carbon can be fixed and sugars can actually be synthesized. So this is how the process actually happens. The stacks of thylakoid sacs connected. Can you see these connections? These are called the stromal lamellae. This is also called the skeleton of the chloroplast, keeping all of these grana safe distance away from each other, increasing the efficiency of the organelle. So imagine that they were all bunched up together, lying on top of each other. It wouldn't be efficient way to capture the sun's energy, right? So the lamellae do this neat, uh, you know, I'll say arrangement work for the chloroplast. In case you did not know how photosynthesis happens, I want to run you down by that once. The purpose of the chloroplast is to make sugar to feed the cell's machinery. Photosynthesis is a process of a plant taking energy from the sun and creating this energy in the form of sugar. When the sun energy hits a chloroplast, the chloroplast, typically the chlorophyll molecules, what I'm talking about, light energy gets converted into chemical energy uh, found in components like ATP and NADPH. Now, these energy-rich compounds move into the stroma where the enzymes fix the carbon atoms from carbon dioxide. The molecular reactions eventually create sugar and oxygen. Plants and animals then use the sugars for food and energy. And animals also breathe the oxygen that is released. Okay, so I hope it's really clear in case you did not know how photosynthesis happens. So chloroplasts have many functions. One obvious one, which I've been bombarding you with again and again, is photosynthesis. You know it. So I'm going to repeat what it is all over again. The second thing, is provision of oxygen supply. Chloroplasts provide oxygen, the byproduct of photosynthesis to all aerobic organisms for respiration. This also we actually just went through. Another interesting thing is that chloroplasts temporarily store starch grains in something called pyrenoid. At night, the starch is transferred to regions of growth and storage. What else a chloroplast does is it utilizes carbon dioxide and it fixes carbon dioxide, keeping the concentration in the air, you know, to its normal level. Uh, chloroplast can also, you know, change into chromoplasts uh, and give you a lot of color in flowers and fruits and, you know, actually go ahead and attract animals. And also fat droplets are stored as plastoglobuli in the matrix of chloroplasts. But still, these are all secondary functions. The primary function of the chloroplast remains as 
you know, the energy uh, generation through a process called photosynthesis. I hope it's really clear. 